guys, what's up? It's me, Catherine, and in today's video, we're gonna get real depressing real fast. I'm just kidding, but we are going to talk about a touchier subject, and that is rejection in entertainment, your acting career, life, stuff like that. This is a question that I get pretty often. You guys want to talk about it, I want to talk about it. So, we're gonna talk about it. If you're new to my channel and you're like, why is this girl so happy while talking about sad stuff? Hi, my name is Katherine Steele and I'm always like that. It's a gift and a curse. First off, I'm a very peppy person. Second off, this will all resolve itself and be a happy video overall, so stick around and you'll see. Also, if you're new to my channel, hi, welcome. Like I said, my name's Katherine Steele and I put out a new theater-related video on every Theater Thursday, plus I do bonus uploads throughout the week, so if you haven't already and you'd like to, go ahead and hit subscribe. That way you get notified for all future videos and you get to join the Theater Thursday fam. First, we take over Broadway, and then the world. You can follow me at Kath underscore Steel on Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram. So, let's talk about rejection. So the very first point that I wanna make is that everyone faces rejection. You might not get cast as the role you want, you might not get cast at all. You are not alone, it is not just you. You're not the weird one out. Everyone goes through it. My personal favorite rejection story, I have a personal favorite rejection story. Like honestly, I just want it printed out on a t-shirt to wear around and show to sad people. Y'all know Kyle Dean Massey, very talented, very famous Broadway hunk that I very much admire. You might know him as Gabe from Next to Normal. I think he was Fierro and Wicked. When he did the college audition circuit, he got rejected from every single school he auditioned for. Do you know what his audition song was? Corner of the Sky from Pippin, which he would later go on to play in the Broadway revival. If that's not an inspiring story, I honestly don't know what is. Rejection sucks, everyone goes through it, even Kyle Dean Massey. Also, college auditions that just reminded me, this video is more geared towards rejection in general, so that is applicable to college auditions, BFA, rejection, that sort of unhappy stuff. But if you're looking for that specifically, I actually have a separate video on that, which I'll link down below. The other major point that I wanna make is how subjective theater and casting and the entertainment industry is. As you guys know, in addition to being an actress, I also work in the television and film industry. I've assisted in casting musicals, so I've been privy to a lot of behind the table discussions. And the reasons that people don't get the part, so tiny, so tiny, and 98% of the time, it's not even over stuff that they had any control over. I do think it's important to a degree to analyze maybe why you didn't get a part or what you can do better next time, but also keep in mind that the majority of the time, it had nothing to do with you. No casting director, no producer, no person for that matter can measure your worth or value as an artist. You are so much more than what you can show in an audition room. There's no way that someone can see your full potential in 30 seconds, you know? So don't give them that worth. Also, it's not that you were bad, it's just that someone else fit their vision more accurately. Also, there's tons of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that you might not even know about. I just wanted to start off by saying that. So, here's what I do when I don't get a part. I give myself one day to be really sad about it. I am a sensitive artist, I have a lot of feelings. I mean, it's hard not to. You put your heart and soul into something, you work really hard on it. You imagine yourself in the costume and on opening night and how you deliver those lines. You've grown attached to the character and the material. It happens to all of us. So I give myself one day to mourn what could have been, eat ice cream, cry, watch a movie, throw darts at the other person's headshot. Just kidding, don't do that. And then I move on. If I don't get cast in the project at all, then I start looking for the next one. Or I find a different activity to focus some extra time on. That can mean taking up a new hobby or revisiting an old one, putting more time into schoolwork, putting more time into friendships and family, working out, maybe picking up more classes. Do something that you love. Fill the void, but with good stuff. If I do get offered a spot, but it's not the role that I wanted, again, give myself 24 hours to feel bad for myself, and then I decide if I want to stay in the show or not. Understand that there is nothing wrong in dropping out of a show that you don't want to do. I know that a lot of people don't want to be branded as like sore losers, but you're not being a sore loser. You're going to be devoting a ton of time, energy, and probably money to this project, so it should be something you love. You gotta love it, you gotta learn from it, or it needs to help you out career-wise. If it doesn't fit one of those three categories, quit. If you decide to stay, stay with the best attitude and the most can-do 
power good aura about you. So make the best of it. Be the most incredible performer in that show. Take it super seriously, be extra professional, and if revenge motivates you, show that director what they could have had. So that's it for this little rant. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. If you haven't already and you'd like to, go ahead and hit subscribe. I hope you guys are doing great. I love you so much and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Just remembering you've had an and when you're back to or makes the or mean more than it did before.